It began as a clear, noble, and necessary objective. Get people of different cultures and backgrounds employed in corporate America. Support businesses owned by minorities. We know the history of it. It emerged out of the civil rights movement, really. I mean, we had the legislative, the Supreme Court rulings, but then that translated into what are the legal protections or the ways to ensure that civil rights were respected, right, mm -hmm. in, in a variety of places, including in the workplace. Diversity and inclusion, uh, you know, can be very complex. Well, diversity is ensuring that uh, you have anyone and everyone at the table. I love diversity. Diversity. It was about valuing human differences. I don't think that corporate America, for the most part, is run by racist and sexist leaders. What's the direct link between inclusion and effectiveness of uh, leadership management? There are a lot of unconscious decisions they make. I think there are a lot of historical practices that people have fallen into. We have 17 sections across the country that make up the United States tennis associations. They may not have vicious intent, but it still is having a negative impact. We have a inclusive training called the micro messaging training. There's some really amazing CDOs out here. We have those conversations individually, and then we come up with what we like to call DNI solutions. It's a mandatory training. So any smart investor, right, whether you're buying bonds, whether you're an individual investor, you want diversification. So it's no different for a company. But is this all that diversity means to your organization? Clearly and most obviously, um, you know, concerns around uh, people of color, women, LGBT are, you know, still kind of the pressing issues that we're dealing with in society. But it goes much broader than that. There's been a lot of challenges lately over the past five to ten years as to whether or not diversity has been successful in corporate America. And I would say those challenges are not necessarily unfounded. Actually, it's a fascinating time for diversity and inclusion because it's in a major inflection point. Diversity and inclusion is not programmatic. What if you discovered your understanding of diversity was outdated, not particularly relevant, and even damaging to your company? One of the challenges we've had here at Fidelity is sort of um, helping our leaders understand that diversity and inclusion is not just about race and gender. Diversity is no longer a traditional way of thinking, and uh, it will be more broader than that. Because a lot of people interchange diversity and representation uh, all the time, and they're not one and the same. You definitely have to tie your DNI goals to the business strategy, or you're not going to be successful. You got to get out of the compliant officer's hat, and that's back to that strategy clubs, departments, department heads, leaders, owners have to understand that your commitment is the strategic development of the organization. I want this thing to grow. I want this to be better. I just want more people involved. Strategic diversity. It's when diversity and inclusion becomes a tool to achieve your corporate mission, vision, and strategy. One of the first things I'd say, and I'd say this to both practitioners as well as corporations, we are not marching anymore. Unlike old thinking, strategic diversity doesn't omit operational and business dimensions. It's explicitly concerned with advancing the business rather than racial or gender representation. And the inflection point we're in now is that it has to go beyond talent. It's not the right thing to do. It's not about checking the box. It's really not about even affirmative action. Right? It's about creating real impact for the organization. It's about driving business value. It's about creating a space for innovation, creativity, perspectives, and thoughts to solve problems. Criticality Consulting, led by Dr. John Fitzgerald Gates, is challenging conventional thinking about corporate and organizational diversity. This is what the business is looking for. Diversity will be ensuring that you have all the different ingredients that you need to make that perfect, in my case, that perfect pound cake. And uh, inclusion would be ensuring that you're putting them all together just right so that you do, in fact, have that perfect pound cake. In a new video series, Dr. Gates examines the practice, progress, 
and potential at nationally known brands in several business categories. Among them, financial services, sports and entertainment, retail, and hospitality. Diversity to me is the mix. It is the mix of every and anything uh, possible. But if that's the only part of your conversation, if that's where you begin and end, then you're, you're doing the work a disservice. You cannot be successful if you don't understand the business and the impact of DNI on the business. So you've got to understand what drives the business, what's important to the business. Bringing decades of research, practice, and insight to his work, Dr. Gates reveals how companies can practice an innovative approach to business while adopting an antiquated form of diversity and inclusion. According to Dr. Gates, if your DNI strategy is based on a human resource model, it is surely behind. And it really is looking at it with the lens in a different place. We have to teach them and show them the changing landscape. You've got to work a little harder. You better keep the pencil sharp. Okay. <laughs> Showing the connection to the business, I think, has been incredibly important. It really is around institutionalizing standards that become business standards. And that's really how you get the attention of the CEO on this topic. With the help of criticality, diversity executives are now taking a second look at how their companies approach diversity and inclusion. To be, in my view, an effective DNI practitioner, you need to truly understand the business of the business. That means you've got to begin to build those relationships with your line leaders, with your business leaders who are the ones that are in the room talking to the CEO. Understanding the culture, understanding the nuances, understanding, frankly, what happens in the trenches. You want to ensure that uh, you have diversity of thought. I think the future of DNI as a discipline will continue to evolve. And I think beginning to have this dialogue that I'm having here with you today, Dr. Gates, is probably the beginning of it. Strategy, the evolution of diversity and inclusion, thought and practice. Thought leadership for DNI executives from criticality, featuring research from Dr. John Fitzgerald Gates. Receive your invitation to subscribe. Strategy series at criticalityconsulting.com.